What's up guys? And thank you for joining for another video from me, Scarander. So, like I said in my previous video with my battle styles, I really wanted to elaborate on a lot of them. I'm actually going to start off right away with one here. Uh, but before I'm doing that, I really want to thank you guys for, for contributing so much with comments, you know, and discussing this. And, you know, all the support really, it, it means a lot to me. And I want to thank the PokerTubers who took the time to share this video with others and also commenting. Um, I'm really sorry it fell short when it came to mention you guys. So I'm actually going to do just one this time, uh, just one of the playstyles and doing a little review of the player that represents it. Because I do realize this video could have got a lot bigger uh, than 20 minutes. I was actually with the finished material, I'll probably be around, you know, 90 minutes. I really didn't want to do that, so I just decided that I do a quick like overview and then we do like the real review of the players and also the playstyle. Uh, well, I have that said, I actually realized that stalling, um, that word, has a negative vibe to it. I don't have the same like scene or view set that most players have, that stall must mean toxic and stalling and wait out. For me, stalling is more about actually you know, being able to block, you know, stopping setups and just, you know, render a team useless, like in for a physical perspective. So with that in mind, I actually decided to switch the name from Staller to Blocker because I do realize that that is basically what the job is. To stall is pretty much to block an opponent. So Blocker is a better word and I do realize most of you guys <laughs> had a negative vibe in that. So sorry for that. Anyway, I will actually get to it now. Let's see, can we get some epic music for this? Yeah, yeah, there it is. All right, I'm feeling it. So, all right, what is the premise of a blocker player? Basically, you know, this is the type of sets that many new players get to. Uh, that is that, you know, they're finding out that it doesn't work being offensive. You have to have a Pokemon that can stay around for a long time. And that's why many players become blockers. Uh, just, you know, like the, the first premise for it is that you get to scout. You get to find out the usual setups. So it's really, really good for that. Uh, also, you know, you're blocking physical pressure. Um, the premise of that is basically that if you have a, like say, I just gonna have it as an example. Uh, you have Gale Wing Talonflame with Choice Band, you know, doing two hit KOs on everything that comes in. Uh, having a Pokemon like Gigalith or, you know, any basic rock type really, you know, there is a four to five hit KO. That is basically what a blocker do, having the typings that, you know, can render pokes that are common useless. Um, they have a very basic, like, defensive play, but it works really, really well. And it's also based on, you know, having some way of recovering, uh, usually having some type of uh, recovery move or rest sleep talk, just to stay around for a long time, because the blocking pokes are the ones that the most are the most needed, really. Another con is obviously they are hard to set up against. That means that they usually wear either Roar or having clear smog could go for haste. I mean, that is not as viable anymore, but you know, they're having at least some type of setups that means that you don't really get the chance to set up before you're forced to switch out or you're totally blocked. Um, they're, like I said, very, very good defensive core. Uh, they're built for lasting very, very long battles. And what I mean long battle is 35 uh, plus. Um, that is basically when most common teams are falling apart. Uh, this is basically what it does actually best. Um, they don't need momentum. That is that they can actually rely on the individual performance of a Pokemon. Um, they don't need the momentum means basically that they are supposed to stop momentum from an opponent. When do they do get momentum, uh, they actually do it by default, that is that their team are falling apart late game. Pretty much means that they get momentum because that basically means that they, their sweeper or their physical core are actually starting to do stuff uh, against the other team. And I should mention that uh, blocker team is usually based on one sweeper, uh, one defensive sweeper, one specially defensive sweeper, one defensive core, one special defensive core and one supporter or force hitter. A force hitter is a Pokemon that, it, you know, force Pokemon to uh, switch out and get really high damage out of it. 
Uh, usually though, they have supporters. Supporters are supposed to have Rapid Spin, Wish, Heal Bell. Because when you have a team that aren't supposed to be for a long or be around for a long time, you need attacks that could provide support for every poke. So you know, this setup is really, really like good because it is made for lasting against opponents who just want to try to sweep. Um, very hard to you know get an early game sweep. You actually need to work around them for a long time to actually make it work. Um, the only real real cons for this team is actually that. While they're good at scouting, and I'll give them that, um, they have a problem, at, like, real early in game, when they don't know what the opponent is supposed to bring. Like, take for example, the Duelist player, usually, usually unusual suspects for sweeping. They can actually dent this type of team, that is that, um, you know, getting one or two pokes out, out of the way, uh, while most of these uh, defensive team are very good at preserving their core, they still lose somewhat of momentum, when losing their like defensive core or losing their special defensive core in early game, so that's why that's why this team somewhat falls apart, and they need to actually scout well in the beginning, and don't do like big mispredictions early game. That's why I wanted to mention Duelist, who usually plays by its own rules, you know, using like I mean, let's say actually Boom vs Swallow, because it is a great example of a way of taking down an opponent opponent just by the sheer surprise of it, really. So, other than that, you know, let's say 10 to 15 turns in, this team actually gets the chance to wall, but during that scout period, this team is somewhat weak, can't lose team members that early. And um, I wrote back sack play there, that is that the sack play in this team are somewhat bad, because they're based on that you have to switch in the Pokemon you sack, so you don't sack the Pokemon that you have at hand. Uh, most like because of the playstyle is that you have to preserve every team member, and uh, they usually just sack pokes uh, when they're at low HP and there's no way of recovering. Uh, and also hazard late game, having that you know we lose a supporter and being that this type of team hasn't that physical edge or especially a offensive edge, they have a tendency to um, not being able to prolong too well against tricks the player. Uh, Trickster player usually use Hazard, they can use Toxic, they're actually built the same way as there's a blocking team, but they are not built around each other at the same way, and are, and are more um, working like, with uh, individual performances of a poke. So the Trickster player can really force a defensive player to play offensively, and being that offensive playstyle of a blocking team is somewhat lacking, um, it actually makes them, you know, wear themselves down. So that is a huge con, and it's something that you have to... If you're going against a stalling team, you have to make sure that you can stall them out and force them to play this physical edging, like, against you, because they will win in blocking, like, all the time. They actually, like I said, this team was made for it, so that means that you actually have to... You can try to outperform them, it, it works, but it isn't recommended because, like I said, they're, this team will work around it, you are not. I can't tell you guys how many times I myself tried to, uh, you know, win a stall game or a blocking game only to uh, trying to win with physical edge and, you know, trying to outpredict. It doesn't work. You need to do the same thing better. That is the only way you'll actually get this thing down or getting passes up force playing. So I really hope I gave you guys a good overview on what the block player is all about. Like I said, I did want to call it stall at first, but I did realize that, like I said, the stalling has a negative vibe, and um, it means a different thing for me, and the blocking is basically what it does, and as I have explained it, it is really, really tough to go up against. Like I said, you know, it is uh, not a newbie style, but it's mostly what professional new players are doing, but we actually have a really good professional player who has this type of playstyle uh, with a little mixture of uh, others. So I'm actually going to mention him now, and I'm gonna do a real review of him and not just like mention him like I said there. Uh, um, like I said, when I did this review of the playstyles first time, when I just mentioned every playstyle, I didn't really got into detail on what this Poketubers is all about. So without further ado, let's actually get into it. Yeah. 
You know, this is actually somewhat weird. Um, I mean, Pimp Knight has been somewhat of my like hero uh, when it comes to NU games. Being that I am an NU player myself, you know, I actually started Pocket Tube because of him, really. And uh, actually, you know, we're both good friends, so <laughs> it's really weird trying to review him because I know he'll rip on me anyway. <laughs> I am so sure about this. But actually, I need to be honest with him, and I need to be honest with you watchers here, that uh, he is a tough player. He is really, 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 really good at blocking. Like, he is probably the guy to watch if you want to know how to block properly, how to deal with sweeping threats properly and easily. This is your guy, like, no doubt about it. Uh, he's doing it so well that it's, it's annoying how well he does this. You know, he's had somewhat of a mixture lately, like, he has this still defensive ground play core with the blocking uh, workings in it. That is, uh, he's still using a defensive, a special defensive uh, sweeper, that is, that they are built as a tank, but hits like a sweeper. Works really well, he has some unexpected sweepers, um, and other than that, he still, like, has that trickster supporter be in combination with the underdog play. The underdog play is usually about having a Pokemon that you don't reveal the complete moves until it actually counts. It can be that, wow, this thing, this poke can recover, or, oh no, it, it has bulk up, it can wall uh, something that is supposed to wall. He's very good at that, he is actually probably one of the best when it comes to the unexpected. I've actually done a little listing here that I think you guys will appreciate. And it's somewhat of a ranking system, it's based on the you know, highest rank being S and uh, the worst rank is F. Uh, watching Pimp Knight, obviously the pocket tubers that I'm going to review are like high classes of player. So Pimp Knight is not, <laughs> not a bad player at all. Uh, offensive is probably his biggest weakness. Um, offensive I gave him a C, that is that he has physical pressure that he can pull off. Uh, but I know he don't want to do it, like, he rather see the opponent do it, uh, which is really, really cool watching, because he's doing that, like I said, really well. Um, other than that, when it comes to what he can do with his capabilities as a team, he can at least actually pull off a sweep late game, you know, and late game is pretty much 25 turns. That is usually when, a, like, a normal team somewhat falls apart, and in his teams actually becomes greater. What I mean greater is that it is supposed to live for, you know, based on, you know, the battles that I watch. It is somewhat based on, you know, being around for 40 turns without going down too easy. So, you know, after 25 turns usually when he peaks, that is when, you know, finish the game. Uh, I don't I, you know, let's say like this, 8 turns later it's probably a 1. So if you know, if you go a match and you, you know, are in somewhat of a good position after 30 turns against him, Chances are you're gonna lose. Just saying. Just saying. And as far as defenses go, and you know, being able to block, you know what this guy should have. He got an S. Uh, he always using pokes that can support with recovery. He got the defensive play down. Has, in, has good predictions. He can do misplays and still recover well. He is all about this. Um, very, very impressive player to watch when it comes to this because. I've seen this guy go against Legendary, going against OU Pokes with his, oh, I don't know, like lesser tier Pokes. <laughs> I mean, I've seen him use a Bronze Song, uh, which I think he calls Dinner Plate, and you know, it did just fine against a lot of things, like annoyingly well. And also his Tropius is probably Legendary, that set is so cool to watch. Um, so I shouldn't really like elaborate more on this. He is very very defensive. He can outwall anybody. Uh, the sack play I gave him a B. He is actually very good at sack play. That is that he doesn't fall into the same traps that a usual blocker do. Um, having like late game sacks. He actually has a good idea on what Pokemon that works and work or doesn't. So yeah very good at sack play. I shouldn't like above average definitely. Um, has some weird moments but you know Overall, he is very good at it, so, you know, no complaints from my side. Elements of surprise, you know, 
He's probably the only blocker I know that can get momentum from a sweeper. Uh, getting momentum pretty much means you know you can take out more than one poke, so you can, you're able to set up, you're able to take a few hits. He does this really, really well. Um, he doesn't rely on it, uh, but he, also, he always have a Pokemon that have, doesn't have the usual set and works against the opponent actually rather well. Uh, so I do encourage you guys to watch that because it is actually somewhat impressive to see that type of display. And that is why we come into uh, the overall that being the last part and I think is really important as a pocket tuber. You know, this is pretty much the definition of why you are popular really. And that is going to be the originality. And the only reason I didn't give him an S in this is because he only plays in NU. Um, he still, you know, he uses a lot of weird stuff and he's using a lot of weird sets. And it works. He knows what he wants to do with him. He builds pokes around them so this folks get the chance to display their sheer strength so you know that's an A in my book for sure had he played in the higher tiers and uh, did this thing in OU he probably wouldn't work but it would be fun to watch but that is basically why I decided to go with an A instead like I said he has some good plans works great almost all the time actually so it's a blast to watch so in total I give this guy an A so there's no real complaints in his playstyle he is really really good at battles he has this like good physical pressure in his team and he has a defensive court for long battles. The only like thing that works against him is the trickster players. It's the type of players that you know can see somewhat what he's doing, doing the same thing, but do it with hazard screen. They prolong the battles without you know being able to actually attack him, but rather force him to play physical. Um, I actually did that on my own on the battle I actually had against him, so I would actually would recommend you guys to watch both that battle and also, what else should I say? I mean, Pimpton is a blast. I do want to challenge him with my type of playstyle someday. I hope to do it. Ben is like is a very good friend of mine, and um, you guys should definitely check him out if you want to know how to be able to block sweepers. Basically, that is basically what he does. Um, so if you feel like someday, you know. Man, that Haxor is still obliterating me. Check him out. You know, you get the basic premise on what your team is supposed to do to be able to deal with common sweepers, basically. Um, I don't know, guys. You know, thank you for watching. Like I said, could you really think that I could done this type of video for what is this? I think almost 20 minutes. I mean, this is just one poker player that I gone against with one battle style. I knew this thing would got out of hand. <laughs> I really knew this. But yeah, it was worth it. I'll actually intend to do this with done deal next time with a trickster player. And that is actually a little more advanced considering most of you guys don't know what it's all about. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Hopefully I get it up before Sunday. Um, and that guys, as always, thank you for watching. I can't believe you waited here for almost 20 minutes to listen to this rambling. I'm, <laughs> I'm real sorry. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it at least. And uh, don't forget to leave a like and um, also, you know, share this on Facebook if you feel that you want to do that or do it on Twitter. I uh, love the support, guys. You know that. You really do, don't you? I love you. No. <laughs> no, but guys, sincerely, thank you for watching. And have a good day. Ugh, good day. I couldn't even pull that one off. Have a good day, guys. Like I said, and take care. All right? Bye.